In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a Langchain in Node.js to have a natural language conversation with a folder of documents. So by the end of this, you'll be able to simply drag whatever documents that you want within this folder, run this script, and you'll be able to query it for questions. So this is sort of a uh, step two to an initial video that I, uh, I did on Langchain. So if you are new to Langchain, I encourage you to check out this video, which I'll link here and in the description. But uh, if you've watched it or feel a little bit comfortable with uh, Langchain and you're just curious how to use document loaders or how to calculate costs for the embeddings endpoint, um, just continue along. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do to get this up and running is uh, we're going to head over to the OpenAI API website. So if you go to platform.openai.com, make an account, uh, go to the top right hand corner, view API keys and generate an API key. So once you have that, we're gonna go into our .env file. Um, and uh, even before we do that, we're just going to uh, touch a couple documents here. So we're gonna to say touch index.js and .env. So I'm not gonna run that. I already have it uh, set up on my end, but just go ahead and do that to get a couple files set up. And then while you're there, you might as well npm init-y just to get our package JSON. Um, Finally, while we're in the terminal, we might as well head over to our package JSON and we're going to install these libraries. So if you just npmi um, all these um, into our uh, uh, terminal here, just like this, just as you see, click enter, it will install all the packages. And finally, while we're in the package JSON, just make sure to uh, add this one line here of type module. You might have to add a comma and then type module because we're, we're gonna be using imports in this example. So once you have the API key, um, uh, head into your .env file and we're going to uh, create a variable called openai underscore API underscore key and paste that in. Once you have that, you can close out your uh, .env file. We're not gonna need it again in this example. Uh, and then we can also close out, um, or I'm going to at least close out my package JSON. You could take a, a look in it, just make sure you have the four libraries that we're gonna be requiring. And uh, like I mentioned, the, the type module. So once we have that, we're going to head over into our index.js. So, you can also, if you want, create this documents file. If you already have some files in mind that you want to uh, query with natural language, um, you can also leave that to the end. I'll leave that to your discretion though. So in, in my example, I just have a few files I'll show you, um, but feel free to use this with whatever you want. Um, so I just had some um, bits of information about Langchain generated from GPT-4. Um, that we'll be able to interact with by the end of this. So I'll just close those for now. But just so you know, so we have uh, multiple types of data, but we're going to have an application that is simply going to go through whatever's in this documents folder and make it work. So the first thing that I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you import the document loaders for the different files. So the one thing to note, I'm going to be using JSON text and CSV and PDF. Um, there are a handful of others and there's more that are being added over time. So I took a quick look before this. So there's things like EPUB that you can add and a handful of others. The one thing to note with some of the other imports is you might have to uh, import an additional uh, library to do so. So I think for docx, it requires something called mammoth. Um, and there's a, a ho host of others for some of the other, the file types of different um, things that you'll have to NPM install as well. So the next thing that we're gonna have uh, after this, after we have all our Langchain set up, uh, I'm going to have you require a handful of things that are related um, sort of separated from that document loader, uh, just so you can see visually what's going on. We're going to use the OpenAI uh, uh, model for our LLM in this example. We're going to use the retrieval QA chain to actually query uh, what we uh, embed uh, and flow.
flesh out uh, at the very end of this uh, bit of code. We're going to use this HNSW lib library. This is going to be how we're going to store our vectors locally. So if you do, um, uh, have tried to set up uh, an external database, you understand that, you know, it, it's a, a couple extra steps. So in this, I'm just going to show you um, how to get down and, and, and uh, working in this example uh, just locally, but you can swap this out for an external database if, if you want or use it in memory if you might not be um, um, uh, embedding uh, very large documents or what have you. So just know that's an interchangeable part. So if you don't like that they're local, um, you can swap that out uh, later. So then we're going to be using OpenAI for our embeddings. Uh, we're going to be using the recursive character text splitter. So the, what, what we're doing here is we're going to be splitting uh, chunks of text uh, because the embeddings endpoint can only handle so many characters at once. So if, if we have a large document, um, you can imagine that it's not just going to take megabytes and megabytes of of um, of files, um, and instead we're just going to send it uh, small chunks. So once we have that, we have this tick token uh, library, and this is the uh, this is a uh, node version um, that uh, is built off of the Python version that OpenAI references for how they calculate tokens. So we have a handful of things here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I don't want people to get hung up on this part. Basically, what we're going to be using this for is simply to calculate the costs of what we send to the API. So before we even query it, we're going to have an approximate cost of how many tokens that we're about to send across. So uh, like I mentioned, if you want to uh, limit it, uh, I'm going to limit it to a dollar in this example. If you want to lower or increase that um, in your use case, feel free to change that once we get to that section. So from there, we're just going to simply import our .env and configure it. Uh, .env is how we're going to reference our OpenAI API key, as you might imagine, and then fs uh, to uh, write to our read and write to our file system. So once we've done that, um, we're going to initialize our document loader. So the thing with the document loader, there's sort of two pieces here. So there are the imports that I had at the very beginning. So we have uh, these document loaders here, and then uh, we're going to reference them here as well. So one thing I, I noticed in the documentation is uh, there are, you might see something like this or slash, slash text. In this example, we're just gonna remove that second argument uh, to make this work without issues. But if you wanted to add another one, um, let's say you wanted to add uh, .epub, you could add it here, add the EPUB loader, and just remember to add it at the top. And then if there's any additional dependencies, make sure to install those too. So once we've done that, we're going to load documents from uh, our specific uh, directory. Um, so this is actually going to be invoking it. It's going to go through this directory and load everything that's here. So I just have three things here, but hypothetically, you could have hundreds um, once you have this set up. So once you have that up, Again, I don't want to get hung up on the calculation here um, and going into the nitty gritty of it, but um, the sort of TLDR of this is we're going to reference the embeddings model that we're going to be using uh, with Open API or Open AI rather, and then we're going to just put in the rate per thousand. So this is what it's shown in their documentation of how much it costs uh, for uh, the the uh, embeddings endpoint. So from there, we're just going to declare a vector store path. You can change this to whatever you want. So say if you want to have a, uh, this is essentially like your your database. You can think of it as, um, so if you want to call this, say if you're querying uh, the Lord of the Rings series or something, you know, whatever you want here, you can, you can be a bit more specific uh, about what you want to do here. 
Then from there, we're just going to create a function that we're going to use a little bit later here. I'll get to this, but we're essentially going to be um, normalizing the documents of what gets returned from our loader here. So the loader will re return this JSON format, and we're just going to normalize it um, to remove um, uh, where it creates new lines and make sure that it's... Um, um, that we're just sending a string across to the the embeddings endpoint. So you could send JSON across, but this is a way to help save on, on tokens by just normalizing that. And I just want to circle back. So we so they sort of misspoke there. We can't actually send JSON across. You could stringify JSON and send it across, but um, Probably a better practice, just send, uh, don't send all those extra characters if you don't need be. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to set up our run function. So uh, in this example, I'm gonna throw a lot of our code uh, just within here. You could break this out and make it a bit more modular if you want, um, but this is going to be where we do uh, the lion's share of the work. So once we have our run function declare, uh, we're going to await um, the calculate cost function that we wrote above that's leveraging that tick token library. And from there, uh, we're going to get a sense on what the cost will be for uh, what we're about to do. So once we have the cost declared, we're going to set an acceptable limit. So in this example, uh, I, I used a dollar, but you can use um, a, another value. Maybe you want to go up or down or, or whatever you want to do. So we're going to have a, a condition for um, essentially running it or saying the, it's too expensive. So once we have that set up, we're going to initialize the OpenAI language model. Um, you can use other models if you want. Um, excuse me. Um, but we're just going to set this up using OpenAI in this example. So from there, we're going to declare a variable for our vector store. And depending on whether we've already declared the vector store and it's run the embeddings, um, it's going to run the code. So what do I mean? Um, if the vector store already exists with that name, it's going to ask that question uh, of the local version without going and embedding again. So if you wanted to uh, say, just have this documents.index uh, as your vector store, and then just continually ask questions here, changing it, uh, you can do so without having to embed and run up that extra cost. Okay, so from there, we're going to be checking, uh, like I mentioned, for an existing uh, vector store um, and then have uh, separate conditions of if it's uh, local or if it notices there's a vector store that's local with that path, use that one. Otherwise, go ahead and do uh, use the um, embeddings logic uh, that we're going to go through in a, in a moment here. So this is just running through how you're going to actually uh, reference that local vector store um, once you've uh, loaded it in. So in our separate condition, and this will run um, after the first occurrence. So while I'm here, I'm just going to delete this um, so we don't get confused. Um, so this is going to run the first time. So it's going to essentially create that folder there and those documents within it uh, once this runs. So it's going to create a new vector store. Um, it's going we're going to declare the chunk size of what we're going to be sending to the API. And then from there, we're going to call the normalize documents function like we went through. We're going to just clean up that JSON and then we're going to actually invoke that splitting. So once we have that set up, we're gonna actually generate the vector store for the documents down here for the first instance. And then once we have that, we're going to um, save that locally.
And one thing that I uh, should have mentioned here, actually just sort of going through this pretty quickly. So in this, this is actually gonna be where we query the ADA2 uh, embeddings endpoint. So we're gonna send our split docs here um, to the endpoint, and this is going to be uh, how we're going to embed and create those vectors. So once we have that, uh, we're going to have our retrieval QA chain, and this is gonna be actually how we query um, the, the uh, documents that we have within our vector. We're gonna pass in our OpenAI model, and then we're going to use the vector store as a uh, retriever. So once we have that, we can actually query it with our questions. So we'll uh, call and query our question like we have all the way up here. Tell me about these docs. You can obviously be more, more, much more specific uh, if you want. And then finally, circling back to the condition of if the cost exceeds a dollar or whatever uh, you have, um, you can just exit out of the program. Um, so once we have that, we're just going to run it. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, do exactly that. So we're going to just say node index.js, and we'll start to see those console logs that we went through here. So it's going to load the docs. Uh, we'll ignore some of these uh, warnings on some of the methods that we're using in Node.js. But um, so it's loading the docs. The docs have loaded, calculating the costs. The cost is, as we can see, nominal, a fraction of a penny. It's creating uh, the vector store. Now we see this document.index being generated on the left-hand side here. Uh, it's creating the retrieval chain and then finally querying the chain. And we see our information here. So lang lang chains, document retrieval capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So like I mentioned, you can really uh, get creative with this. So throw all sorts of things in here. Um, I just threw in a, a, an Energy Star um, a document that I had in here before. Uh, this is just something from Apple that I just happen to have locally on my mach machine. Um, so I could ask questions uh, about that uh, potentially. I think that came up when I accidentally un undid um, uh, that deletion, clicking uh, Command Z there. but. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. I plan on creating uh, quite a bit more Langchain content over the course of the next month at least. So if you enjoyed uh, this type of content, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to see, uh, let me know in the comments. Most of the ideas I have for video come from users. Um, I'm just trying to triage and, and try and be able to get through as much as I can uh, with what uh, individuals are looking for in terms of content. So uh, without further ado, until the next one.